Welcome back third graders to our science lessons. In this video, we're going to cover lesson three in our unit five, and then do the lesson check and lesson roundup together. As you watch this video, you may follow along in your book. Previously in lesson two, we explored how characteristics can affect the survival and reproduction of an animal. In this lesson, we're going to learn more about how individual traits or group behavior can increase the chances of an organism's survival and reproduction. In your books, page 302, we can see a picture of some giraffes in the wild. Giraffes, like all organisms, have characteristics that help them survive in their environment. Giraffes form groups to watch predators, such as lions and leopards, while the other giraffes are eating or sleeping, as you can see in this image. On page 303, we can see two pictures of nests. These nests were built by the same kind of bird, the bowerbird. Bowerbirds are most known for their unique wooing behavior where males build a nest and decorate it with sticks and brightly colored objects in order to attract a female bowerbird for the purpose of reproduction. Female bowerbirds love decorations, especially blue ones. So males decorate their nests with colorful things they find around to attract the females to their nests. The more decorated the nest is, the better chances they get of wooing. So, if we look back at the pictures in your book, can you tell how these nests are different? And which male bowerbird do you think is more likely to find a mate? We're going to answer this later, but keep in mind that the more decorations, the better chances. In Exploration 1, we're going to explore and identify some characteristics and traits that help living things survive, find mates, and reproduce. Animals and plants have many characteristics that help them survive and reproduce. This is a pitcher plant. It's called a pitcher plant because its shape is like a water pitcher. This plant grows in soil that doesn't have a lot of nutrients, so to survive, it gets nutrients from insects such as flies. Because the plant can't move to get the flies, it has special characteristics to help it trap the insects it needs. In your books, page 304, number 2, we will discuss some of these characteristics and then write the missing letter in the circles. The following characteristics are A. Flowers attract insects. Pitcher plants produce flowers before the pitchers form. The plant would not reproduce if the pollinators were trapped and consumed by the plant. B. A lid hangs over the opening of the plant to keep the plant moist, the rain out, and the insects in. C. Translucent patches on the lids confuse insects and make it hard for them to find a way out. D. If the plant grows in the shade, it's green. However, if it grows in direct sunlight, it is red. And E. Spikes line the opening of the plant. These make it difficult for the insects to climb out of the plant once inside. C and D are already filled in, so we still have A, B, and E. Pause the video here if you would like to think about the answers on your own, then unpause to continue. Let's read A again. Flowers attract insects. Pitcher plants produce flowers before the pitchers form. The plant would not reproduce if the pollinators were trapped and consumed by the plant, so it should be here next to the flowers. B. A lid hangs over the opening of the plant to keep the plant moist, the rain out, and the insects in. The lid's over here next to the opening of the pitcher. And finally, E. Spikes line the opening of the plant. These make it difficult for the insects to climb out of the plant once inside. It should be here where the spikes are shown. You know that animals have different traits. 
traits such as color, size, and body parts make animals look different, but these traits may also affect survival. These animals are both jaguars, but they have different characteristics. All jaguars have spots on their skin, but they're harder to spot on black jaguars. And since these jaguars are black, they can be easily spotted in the grassland, so they tend to stay in trees as they watch for their prey. Tan jaguars live on grasslands because it is easier for them to blend in. They are larger than black jaguars and have stronger jaws. On page 305, number 3, we're going to match some of these jaguars' characteristics with the correct type of jaguar. So the characteristics are A. Jaguars can be either black or tan. Both black and tan jaguars have spots. You just have to look closely to see them on the black fur. B. Black jaguars are usually smaller and live in trees. Their black color makes them harder to see in the shadows. C. Tan jaguars are larger and live on grasslands. They tend to eat larger prey. Their tan color and spots make it easier for them to blend into the grassland. And D. Tan jaguars have larger, stronger jaws. They used to crack bones and bite through tough reptile hide. Pause the video here if you would like to think about the answers on your own, then unpause to continue. In A, they are talking about the spots found on the skin of jaguars. All jaguars have spots, but on black jaguars, they're harder to spot. So A should be here. In B, they're saying how black jaguars are smaller, but since they are black, they're easier to spot, so they tend to hide in tree. So B should be here. In C, they're telling us that tan jaguars live in grasslands because their color helps them to blend in, so C should be here. And finally, D, tan jaguars have stronger jaws, which they use to bite their prey, so it should be here. Now, if we take a look at these two sparrows, we might notice that they have different colors and patterns. The sparrow on the left has white stripes on its head. That's why it's called a white striped sparrow. The one on the right has tan stripes, so it's called a tan striped sparrow. These differences affect their chances of reproducing. Let's see how. On page 306, number four, we're going to match some of these sparrows' characteristics with the correct type of sparrow. So the characteristics are A. Sparrows may have white or tan stripes on their heads. The white striped sparrow is usually more aggressive. Because it can be seen more easily, it has to defend itself. B. Tan striped male sparrows help more with their offspring. C. Both white striped and tan striped female sparrows prefer males with tan stripes. Male sparrows with tan stripes are less likely to be involved in fighting. And D. Both white striped and tan striped male sparrows prefer females with white stripes. The more aggressive white striped female will defend her home and her young. Pause the video here if you would like to think about the answers on your own. Then unpause to continue. In A and D, they're talking about the white sparrows and how they are more aggressive than tan striped sparrows. Male sparrows also prefer white striped females because they are stronger. In B and C, they are talking about tan striped sparrows and how they help more with their offspring and how females prefer tan striped males because they are less aggressive. In your books, page 307, we're going to solve number 6 together. As we read each sentence, try to guess the answers on your own. Pause the video and take your time, then unpause it to continue. In part A, we have the following words, shadowy places and light grasses. The sentence goes as follows. Animals with darker colors, such as the black jaguar, 
are more likely to hide in blank while stalking prey. So as we said before, since black jaguars can't hide in the grassland due to their dark colors, they tend to hide in the trees. So the answer is shadowy places. In part B, we have the following words, stronger jaw and weaker jaw. The sentence goes as follows. An animal with a blank is more likely to break through bones for the nutrients inside or tear through a reptile's tough covering. So we have a lot of keywords here that could help us guess the answer. In order for the jaguar to break a bone or tear through a reptile's tough covering, they must have a stronger jaw. In part C, we have the following words, more likely and less likely. The sentence goes as follows. When a trait is more desirable to females, the male will be blank to find a mate. As we said before, the more desirable or wanted the trait is to a female, the more likely it is for the male to find a mate. In exploration 2, we're going to see how animals living in groups have a bigger advantage over those who run solo. Many animals live in groups, both on land and in water. Being a part of a group helps animals obtain food, defend themselves, and cope with changes. Some groups are small and others are very large. In your books, page 311, we can see a picture taken from the bottom of the ocean. The structures that you see here are actually made up of groups of tiny animals called coral. Coral might look like ocean decorations, but they are living organisms. While people think they are rocks or ocean plants, coral are actually many tiny animals that live together in a group. As they grow together, they form coral reefs. On the same page for number 7, think of other animals that live in groups. What benefits come with living with others? Well, ants, bees, lions, zebra, elephants, geese, dolphins, and wolves are all animals that live in groups. Animals that live in groups may be better able to survive when attacked or find food. Living as part of a group can help animals survive. They can work together to hunt for food. Groups are well protected from predators. They also are better able to protect their young. Groups can work together to cope with changes in the environment. In your books, page 312 and 313, in number 8, we have pictures of animals. Under each picture, we're going to read the captions, underline the cause, and draw a circle around the effect of how the characteristics help these animals survive. Okay, so first we have a group of zebras. Zebras running make it hard for other animals to single out a lone zebra when a herd starts to run. This makes the zebra harder to catch. When zebras run, they look like a moving blur of stripes, so predators won't be able to catch them easily. So remember, we're going to underline the cause, which is the why, and circle the effect. So, because the zebras run in a group, it makes them harder to catch. In the second picture, we have a group of hyenas. Hyenas work in packs to hunt for food. They can take down larger animals by working together. So, because they work in packs, they can take down larger animals. In the third picture, we have a group of whales. To protect their offspring, sperm whales work together to raise their young. With better protection, more young reach adulthood. So, because they work together to raise their young, more young will grow and reach adulthood. In the fourth picture, we have a group of penguins. Coping with the harsh cold of winter, male penguins huddle together. This behavior keeps their eggs warmer. So, because they huddle together, they keep their eggs warm. 
In the fifth picture on page 313, we have a group of ants. Ants have different jobs such as weaving nests, hunting for food, and laying eggs. They meet their needs better in a group than they could by themselves. So because they have different jobs, they meet their needs better in groups. And in the last picture, we have clownfish and anemones. The clownfish hides in the venomous tentacles of the anemone. Animals lured by the colorful clownfish are eaten by the anemone. So because the clownfish hides in the venomous or poisonous tentacles of the anemone, the animals are eaten by the animal. So the clownfish and the animals here are living together to help one another. On page 314, number 10, we're going to identify the reason these animals live in groups. We have the following words, protection, hunting, reproduction, and coping with change. In the first picture, notice how the fish are in a big group. In the second picture, we can see wolves traveling in packs. And in the third picture, dolphins work together to raise young. Pause the video here and think of the answers on your own, then unpause to continue. Fish swim in big groups to protect themselves against predators. Wolves hunt better when they travel in packs. And dolphins have better chances of reproducing and raising their young when they swim in groups. On the same page, Let's answer number 11 based on what we know so far about animals living in groups. So, why is it an advantage for animals to live in groups? Remember that the animals in a group have different characteristics. How might those different characteristics help the group survive if something were to happen? Well, when animals with different characteristics live together, some may be more likely to survive than others which don't have those characteristics if the environment changes. In your books pages 317 to 319, we're going to answer the lesson check and lesson roundup together. Pause the video here if you would like to read the questions on your own and try to guess the answers, then unpause to continue. Remember, you can pause the video anytime you want to copy the answers on your book. Let's think back to the beginning of the lesson to answer this question. Now that you know how animals' characteristics help them survive, explain why one male bowerbird is more likely to find a mate. Be sure to do the following. Describe how the two nests are different. Explain which nest will be more likely to attract a female bowerbird. And explain how attracting a female will help the animals reproduce. The nest on the left has fewer decorations, but they are blue. The male bowerbird that built a more elaborate nest is more likely to attract female bowerbirds since we said that females are attracted to decorations. So the more decorations, the better chance the male gets of attracting a female. The male that is better at attracting a female bird will be more likely to reproduce. For numbers 2 to 6, we're going to answer the questions about how plants and animals can be successful in their environments. Number 2. How might the spotted fur of a jaguar help it survive? Is it A. It helps the jaguar find a mate. B. It helps the jaguar blend into its environment to hide from prey. C. It helps the jaguar grow large. Or D, it helps the jaguar cope with changes in the environment. As we said in this lesson, the spots on the skin of the jaguars help them blend in with their environments. So the answer is B. In number three, what advantages do these geese have by traveling in a large group? Is it A, they're hidden from predators? B. They can fly slower. C. 
they can cope with changing environment or d they won't fall out of the sky they're asking for the advantages remember you can always eliminate the answers that do not show any significant advantage geese tend to fly together as a group to help cope with changing environments so the answer is c in number four we're going to match between the phrase that describes the effect to the animal's action that caused it so the effects are building an elaborate nest keeping eggs warm and protecting their young the causes are penguins huddle in a group a bowerbird attracts a mate and sperm whales work together because the bowerbird wants to attract a mate it builds an elaborate nest with lots of decorations because the penguins huddle in a group they keep the eggs warm and finally because the sperm whales work together they protect their young in number five we have a table of some animals we're going to check the column to show whether the animal's color provides protection or helps it attract mates and reproduce we have the following animals clownfish white striped sparrow black jaguar and zebra remember when we said that clownfish hide in the poisonous tentacles of anemones well that's because it protects itself from the animals that try to eat it so it's protection we also said that white striped sparrows are preferred by other sparrows so they have better chances of reproducing so the color here is for reproduction the black jaguar hides in the trees because it is easily seen in the grassland so it does that for protection and finally the zebra stripes make it harder for predators to catch them when they run because they would look blurry so the stripes are for protection in number six we're going to write the word that correctly completes the sentence the sentence goes as follows behaviors and physical blank help animals succeed in their environments think of what animals have that help them survive if you said traits or characteristics then your answer is correct now the lesson roundup on page 319 part a review what you have learned about how organisms are successful in their environments write the benefit of the trait shown in each image we have the following words reproduction trapping food and hunting the first picture shows a pitcher plant remember in the lesson we said Pitcher plants trap insects inside in order to get their nutrients, so the answer is trapping food. The second picture shows the flower of the pitcher plant. We know that flowers are used for reproduction. And finally, the jaguar is a hunter in nature, so the answer is hunting. In part B, we're going to fill in the blanks with a word or words that make the sentence complete. We have the following words, care for young, hunt, cope with change, and confuse predators. You may want to go back to the exploration tool, items 8 and 10, to help you guess the answers. The first sentence goes as follows, wolves that blank in a pack are more successful than wolves that hunt alone. Wolves are hunters in nature, so they hunt in a pack second sentence says the group of moving zebras helps blank remember when we said that when zebras run they look like a moving blur of stripes this helps zebras confuse the predators to be able to get away safely third sentence goes as follows when penguins huddle together during a snowstorm they're showing how they blank in the lesson we said that when penguins huddle this helps keep their eggs warm so they are coping with change in their environment which in this case is the snowstorm 
Last sentence says, Dolphins that travel together are better able to blank. Traveling together protects the young and gives them a greater chance of growing into adults. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we will be learning more about how changes in the environment can affect the organisms.